All right, so I got the fixture bolted to the table, and I've got a drill that I use to drill the holes lined up in the center here. So that's where Fusion has the origin laid out in the center. So this is where we're going to start, and we'll cut pockets, 20 pockets on this plate. I use a lot of screws because the thin UHMW wants to curl and I want it nice and flat. Alright, so the next step that I want to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to drill um, origin holes in case I want to do only a few tags at one time. And then I'm going to drill release holes and these holes will get drilled out to a quarter of an inch and this lets me get in with a tool and pop them out of the, the fixture. So I've already ran it one time and it just barely touched the surface so I got it set to where it's going to cut down about a hundred thou. So I'm going to hit start. That's the tool change and hit start again. When it gets done, I'll take this off and I can just manually drill these holes, the release holes. These origin holes will stay at that depth. Alright, so here's the finished fixture. So this gives me 20 work offsets G54, 55, 56, 57, 58, and so on. And I can take the dog tag, drop it in. It sits 60 thou, the pocket is 60 thou, dog tag's about a millimeter, so it's about 20 thou below the surface. So it's in there and not moving around. And you can just about pick it out of there by hand, but the removal hole is there in case you get some that are slightly oversized that fit in kind of tight. You can come in here with a tool and pop them out. So there's the dog tag fixture that holds 20 dog tags. All I have to do is program my work offsets. Each one of these is two inches center line to center line apart and from here to here is three inches. So I can just go in and program all my work offsets in one, one time and load the program in Fusion. There's a trick in Fusion to do the work offsets and um, while I've got the camera in hand, I'll show you right quick. Okay, I wanted to show you how I'm going to run the fixtures. So imagine I just put a single hole in this tag, but if I had an engraving on here, then this would actually show you how I'm going to get this to make 20 parts. So in the setup, we're going to go to edit and on the post processor normally this will be at zero. Change this to one. This one will automatically go to one. Change this to the amount of tags that I'm going to do so it's 20. And then change this operation order, order by tool. And when you do that 
then you come over here and uh, we're going to post the process hit OK and I'm just going to go 101 hit save and you know, we'll replace it ok and when the code comes up you can see there's G54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 59P7, 59P8, and so on and so on. Now, <clears throat> we can change, if we're doing a, a lot of tags, say we're doing two or three hundred, when it does this G28, G91, Z0, this will do a full retract before it goes to the next one. So you can edit this code and right here you can change this to where it retracts maybe you know half an inch above the part and that will help speed up your production runs we will show you what it looks like on the machine with the Z0 alright so I got the fixture laid out here and just to give you a little rundown of how I'm going to program the offsets to have one cam file duplicated 20 times. So the center line of each part is 2 inches and then from here to here is 3 inches. So in the machine it wants to go by millimeters. So 25.4 millimeters is 1 inch and then times 2 is 50.8. So down here we have the 25.4 times 2 is 50.8. So you can see the X and Y starts at 0. When I fire the machine up, I have the spindle all the way up and the spindle is directly over the origin holes that I drilled in the center. So I can start this G54 over here if I want to. So you can go down, take your bit, and center it in the drilled hole. and that puts you dead center of the part. Then you have X0, Y0 and just add 50.8 to the next number in line till you come all the way down to fixture number 10. So you got G54, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, P7, so 54, 5, 56, 57, 58, 59, P7, P8, P9, P10, 11, 12, all the way to 20. So there's our Y at zero. So when you get down to here, it uses the same X all over again, but the Y changes. So that's 25.4 times 3, 76.2. So there's all my Y. So this is what I programmed on paper. And if you go to Mach 3 on the offsets tab, the quick reference are right here. But to get further than that, the easiest way is just to go here to the fixtures and go in and manually program them in. So there's all the manual numbers that you just saw on the piece of paper. So what I'm going to do, since I've just programmed these by hand, I'm going to hit start and it should come down and just tap each one and so each time that it finishes the code it will advance to the next fixture and do the same thing over and over and over so let's hit start and let's see what happens there's 54 55 56 now we can do some code editing to keep the spindle from going all the way up when I'm actually doing tags. So here's the same program that we had that just comes down and pecks. It comes all the way up, across and all the way down, pecks, all the way up and down. So we're trying to minimize the amount of cycle time between each tag. So we deleted the G28, G91, Z, normally it's Z0. So when it finishes, the G28 tells it, um, I believe, you know, go back to machine coordinate Z0, which is all the way up, and then it runs the next block and the next fixture. It comes over, 
does the whole thing. So let's run this without the, the G28 in the line of code. Okay, we'll hit start. Gonna come on the first one. There we go. All right, there you go, and that shows how much quicker it'll run with taking that line of code out. So what I'm going to do um, when I do the editing of the video, I will time the previous and this cycle time, and let's see how much time it saved just by eliminating that code. So that's it. I'm going to run a, a set of dog tags, and I'll just kind of do a quick shot of it in, you know, working. Might do it in fast forward. I don't know. So uh, anyway. That's the end of the video. Uh, thanks for watching. If you like what you see, then uh, subscribe to my channel. Hit the little button down here. You can hit the bell for notifications when I upload more videos. And if you would, share this video with your friends, people in the CNC industry with hobby machines such as this. Anyway, thanks again for watching. I'm going to show you the, the way we were talking about the G28, having to go in the code and take it out. When you do your post process on a Mac, you go down here to properties. On the windows, you'll have a second window that comes up. You can drop this down and scroll down the list here. G28 Safer Tracks. Uncheck that and hit OK. And be careful when you do this because it's there to kind of help you out. But if you know that you don't want it, and when the code comes up here, here's your G54. So we're going to look for G55. Sorry about the glare. So we scroll down here. There's G55. And normally right here is where you would see that G28 that we were taking out. So if you're doing repetitive um, pictures and you don't want that G28 safer track, uncheck it. Okay, so we've got 20 tags loaded in. I have the Z height set, and then I copied and pasted it on the other 19 offsets in the fixtures tab on Mach 3. So G28 safer tracks are turned off. The safe Z height is three quarters of an inch. So when it comes down, when it finishes, it should come up three quarters of an inch and come over and do the next one. So we're going to run this and uh, keep our fingers crossed, try not to crash the machine. So here we go.
we're about done. We are at 1 minute and 20 seconds. There it goes for the second one. Sets in 26 minutes and two seconds. So I've got blues to do and two rows of blacks. So it's really nice to have a fixture set up. 25 minutes later, I just unload and reload the fixture, and I can do other things while it's working. So that's pretty much it for this video. So if you like what you see, then uh, go ahead and hit the uh, subscribe button, hit the like button, and uh, share this video with your friends. Anyone that you know that has a 6040 CNC, um, <clears throat> share the video with them, and uh, come back to my channel for more videos in the future. Thanks for watching.